And the topic that we'll be discussing today focuses on the Arctic methane emergency. And uh, we have some very grave information to share with you for those of you who are not familiar with this, this subject, this aspect of climate change. Now, a few days ago, there was an article that appeared in the New York Times online, and I took note of it. It was sent to me by a friend because, to me, it was a, um, a, a milestone, really. The second paragraph reads, even with a deal to stop the current rate of greenhouse gas emissions, scientists warn the world will become increasingly unpleasant. And the journalist went on to say, without a deal, they say the world could eventually become uninhabitable for humans. Now, as usual, we are just focused on ourselves, on human life, and ignoring the fact that we depend upon other life for our own survival. And I want to make it clear that, in my view, and I think implicit in the views of many of you, um, is the fact that what we are negotiating here is not a deal so much between the global north and the global south, as much as we are negotiating a deal between life on Earth, the well-being of life on Earth, and money. This is implicit in the press conferences that you will hear up here often. The last press conference that we followed upon from Cannes, where they point out the specific areas where moneyed forces are opposing progress. But I want to make it very much clearer in the presentation that I'll give you today, and I'll return to the subject of money and economics. But let's go to the Arctic. This is a view of the polar ice cap in late summer when it's at its minimum in late summer of 1980. Here's one data point just a few years later in 2007. And lest you think I'm cooking the data, here is the record where each color represents a different month of the year, late summer being the lowest. And recently, scientists began to realize that they could no longer plot the decline of ice in a linear manner because it was behaving in an exponential manner. The Arctic sea ice is decaying exponentially. And it may disappear in summer, com late summer completely as soon as next year. Sometime between next year and, and 2020 is most likely, we believe. Returning to the Arctic region, I want to point your attention to that area, a submerged shelf off of Siberia that is approximately 70 meters, about 200 feet below water. During ice ages past, it was above water, and there was abundant life there at times. And now that life is decomposed under the sediments of that East Siberian Arctic shelf and has turned into something else. Here's another view, a map view, of the East Siberian Arctic shelf. And as you'll read the caption, it says that that shallow ledge of submerged sea shelf is estimated to contain between 500 and 5,000 gigatons, billion tons of methane, a huge amount. To give you a sense of the magnitude, there are approximately five gigatons of methane in the atmosphere of Earth today. And we are talking about from hundreds to thousands of times that amount contained in that one shallow ledge. What you're seeing on this slide is the release of methane from one of several hundred plumes that were discovered when explorations went up there in 2007. And the notation that methane is approximately 86 times as powerful a greenhouse gas as CO2. Now, you will see variation in that number for the following reason. When the methane is emitted, it's estimated to be above 150 times as powerful a greenhouse gas as CO2. Over 150 times as powerful.